I can't believe we're 10 years old. It's been an incredible journey at Restless Beings. We initially started off as a platform where we could just express our shared sense of restlessness and frustration at the world, discuss current affairs, uh, talk about the injustices faced by marginalized communities. And it was just almost like a blog. It then evolved into something that we know of the organization now, uh, which is an organization that actions out the words and, and can actually measure tangible changes for communities that we support. Since our inception, creativity has been at the heart of Restless Beings. We believe that making human rights and charity accessible to the average person is really important and the way to do that is through the arts, is through music, is through working with innovative ways which takes away uh, the stats, the facts and things that bog down and dehumanise an issue to an individual. Um, we have a number of projects at Restless Beings. We work with street children, we work with women, we work with refugee rights and across those projects we've been able to make serious changes in the last 10 years. Our very first project started in 2008 when we worked with street children in Bangladesh. We've met thousands of children over the years, children who live on the streets, work, eat, survive on the streets on a daily basis. They're labourers, they, they are support systems to each other. And one of the problems that we recognised back then was that there was an addiction to a drug called Dandy, there was trafficking that was taking place where the children were being sold into neighbouring countries for you know, sex trafficking, um, a lot of the children were working in the lines of prostitution um, and, and, and many other social ills. What we decided to do is find ways in which we could support these children in the most holistic way possible, offering them rehab, trying to provide livelihood support, housing, giving them some sort of sense of support as a family network almost, education, basic things like shower and clean clothing and underwear. These are the things that we did for many, many years while trying to also figure out how we could support them in a way that would be permanent. One of the most obvious ways that we've been able to measure the change that we've made is an example of a young girl that I met in 2009 called Lucky and she was at the time maybe no older than 10, 11 years old. She was on the streets, she was working in prostitution, she was regularly taking this drug dandy. Um, and through the years we've helped her in terms of housing, we've helped her in terms of rehabilitation and so many other factors. Um, and it was really, really moving in 2017 when we bumped into Lucky uh, again, grown up. You know, now she was married, she had a child, she'd moved away from the streets, she'd moved away from that world of, of social maladies that are associated with children on the streets. And that kind of thing gives us hope that actually one, at, one by one, one child at a time, we can change the future for street children in Bangladesh. Our women's rights project is in Kyrgyzstan, Central Asia. We support women who are forced into marriage through bride kidnapping, who are abused or trying to escape these kind of marriages. It's, it's known as something which was once a romantic cultural phenomena, but has now been abused over time and is known as alakachu. We call it non-consensual alakachu. One of my personal highlights for this project was working with one of the top filmmakers in Kyrgyzstan to make an advert for Kyrgyz National TV. It was really difficult emotionally to do this because it was reliving a horrific experience of a woman, her getting kidnapped and taken and being forced into marriage and the consequences afterwards and the abuse that she lived with. But it made a difference. This advert and the campaign that was attached to it was able to make um, a real difference nationwide and it actually contributed towards the changes of a government legislation in Kyrgyzstan to make bride kidnapping more punishable. We could actually measure the tangible difference we were making through our work. In recent years, the largest project that we've had has been our refugee rights project, and that's working with the Rohingya of Burma. In 2009-10, uh, I actually visited the Rohingya community on the border of Bangladesh and Burma, and at that time that population was around about 100,000 refugees. Over the years, we've seen countless times the Rohingya being targeted by the Burmese military and forces. In 2012, the Rohingya faced one of the largest crises so far. 200 villages were burned down by Burmese military forces and 150,000 people were fi found themselves in IDP camps. At the time, hardly any media were releasing information about the Rohingya and through our various networks, we actually managed to get footage out of Burma of the violence and the burning that the Rohingya were facing. This footage then made the Rohingya issue prominent on news sources across the world. And it was the first time that the Rohingya refugee crisis was actually being talked about on a political level. In 2015, the Rohingya found themselves in another set of trouble, this time on the borders of Aceh in Indonesia. 10,000 refugees had found themselves on the shores of Indonesia, not being able to land in Malaysia, Thailand, and they were ping-ponging between three countries. Once again, restless beings were one of the first responders to the Rohingya crisis. We stepped in, we provided clean water, security, food, nutrition, and housing for those refugees at that time. 
In August 2017, the Burmese military forces launched their most violent attack on the Rohingya community, forcing more than 700,000 people across the border into Bangladesh. The Rohingya now face a crisis like none before. Racist beings responded on so many levels. Since the first refugees crossed the border, we provided more than 100 tons of aid. Whether that's food, that's shelter, whether it's monsoon equipment, we've also provided things like child-friendly spaces, women-friendly spaces, elderly-friendly spaces, and it hasn't stopped just on a humanitarian level. We've worked on an advocacy level as well. Over the years, we've presented at the House of Lords numerous times. We are an active member of the APPG, the all-party parliamentary group on the Rohingya, Burma and Bangladesh. And it doesn't stop there. We work with the Rohingya diaspora in places like India, Malaysia, Indonesia, in Bangladesh and Burma, of course, also in the UK, the US, across Europe, in the Middle East. And just as our commitment to the Rohingya diaspora and the Rohingya community has increased, so has yours. Through our various petitions and protests, we've attracted more than 100,000 people who have voiced their concerns and their dissatisfaction at the Burmese military. And we intend to continue that for years to come, until the Rohingya issue exists no more. Resist Beings has been a vehicle and an agent of change over the last 10 years. Thank you for all your support over the years. And we need this support to continue as we look to support other communities that are facing such difficult times ahead. And we hope you can join us in that journey. Thank you.